We'll be starting the ceremony in just a few moments. Before we start, I have a few announcements. First, we ask that you remain seated during the procession this morning. This will allow everyone to have a better, unobstructed view of the graduates as they enter the gym. During the ceremony, the students will circle off of the podium and down this aisle and then across the center aisle and back to their seats after they've received their diplomas. Hopefully this will give you a good opportunity to get some great pictures. After the ceremony, the graduates will recess down the center aisle and out the back door of the gym where they'll be entering from in just a few moments. They will then re-enter the main lobby down by the auditorium. We've done this so that hopefully there won't be quite as much congestion outside of the gym as everyone is exiting the gym at the end of the ceremony. In case of an emergency, there are exits in all four corners of the gym, and there is additional seating in the auditorium where you can both see and hear the ceremony on the big screen. Finally, we invite you to join the graduates in the lobby and the cafeteria after the ceremony has been completed for a reception. Thank you.
Would you please rise? Members of the school board, Ms. Holt, Mr. Edwards, Ms. Longnecker, faculty, family, friends, and most importantly, my fellow classmates, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the eighth Bow High School commencement exercise. Many times in life, we are stopped and forced to go in new directions outside of our comfort zones. Today is one of these days. Today we stand at a trailhead together, a true junction on the side of the mountain we have spent climbing for the last 13 years of our lives. At the beginning, we all met at the base of the mountain, and with a kiss from our parents, we were off, blazing one trail together as classmates. From the very first day of kindergarten, we knew we would get here, to this very point, but who knew it would happen so fast? At the beginning, we climbed slowly, learning the basic lessons and skills to progress forward. We made friends, learned how to color, and hatched baby chickens. I remember the harsh lesson one of our classmates learned while standing at the, large, while standing at the top of the large twisty slide as a devious girl snuck up behind him. <laughs> as we grew older, we also grew stronger and closer together as a class. Together. We experienced Memorial School and all of the privileges that came with it. At Ferry Beach Environmental Camp, we played cards, traded candy we weren't supposed to have, and cried together at night because we had never been away from home for so long. At Sergeant's Camp, we, we attended Sergeant's Camp and dreamed of the distant land called high school. We watched our science teacher store parts of a dead deer in a refrigerator <laughs> right next to her lunch. One of us even learned what it feels like to spill hydrochloric acid on his lap, and as a result, spent the rest of the day in Mr. Pinkham's windsuit. <laughs> Tony? <laughs> 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 
Although some people would consider these lessons less important than those taught in textbooks, I disagree. In fact, experiences such as these have shaped us over the years, given us personalities and a sense of humor. Incidents such as these have given us some of the most essential skills in life. As we entered high school, the path took a dramatic turn. Although the scenery was different and even a little intimidating at first, we were all in it together and soon became comfortable in our new school climate. As freshmen, we struggled to figure out block scheduling and had an even more difficult time paying attention for a full 90 minutes. We read more challenging books and worked harder and longer on homework than ever before. As sophomores, we embarked on our first major research project, the Sophomore Project. We learned that we could pull off a class trip to the beach and have fun, even though it poured all day. As juniors, our steps quickened and the terrain became steeper. Thoughts of college and life beyond high school began to creep into our heads. We dressed up as citizens of other countries, spoke their languages, and ate their food at the World Fair. We got together on weekends for late night cookouts at the G Fields. Yet again, the bond was forged. As seniors, we dealt with college admissions, employment opportunities, the SATs, and completing our senior projects. And who could ever forget the senior class trip? It is apparent through the few examples I have given and the thousands that I have not that this class, the class of 2005, is a unique one. The class of 2005 has consistently set the standard for future classes. During our years together, we have truly made a trail for others to follow. We have started numerous traditions, promoted the caring nature of the Bo school system, and of course, added humor to everyone's lives along the way. We are a class of individuals with a wide variety of talents and interests. We have students who insist on wearing green fur jackets or tie-dyed pants, and we have a few who won't leave the house without matching every article of clothing, all the while carrying a nice latte. <laughs> we are award-winning sculptors and future architects. We are merit scholars and seatbelt challenge finalists. We are all-state musicians and all-state athletes. We are drum majors and league bowlers. We are NHS members and ping pong club founders. We are gardeners and automotive enthusiasts. Together, we comprise one of the most diverse and indeed interesting classes to ever pass through the doors of high Bow High School. Our diversity, however, has not just provided us with interesting memories, but it has also given us the ability to go where other classes could not. With the implementation of all of our very different gifts, we have been able to overcome any obstruction in our path up the mountain. We have always respected each other's differences and put them to use. Whether you started at the base with us or joined along the way, we have always accepted new classmates and welcomed them to our trail. It is all of these things that make us so unique. Of course, along the way, we have faced difficult challenges. We have scaled steep terrain and occasionally slipped on a wet rock. Like any journey, we have had our hard times. We have seen parents separate and pets die. We have suffered the loss of classmates and family members. But in the face of these challenges, we have come together and offered support where support is needed. We have volunteered thousands of hours and raised thousands of dollars for charities. We have given hope to classmates having a hard time and as a result have grown into what we are today. At the same time, we have experienced some of life's greatest, greatest pleasures. Together, we have fallen in love, gained new family members, and learned the value of friendship, perseverance, and self-confidence. Class of 2005, the memories we have made will stick with us for the rest of our lives. The path we have blazed is a permanent one. It is the path that has led us here today and the path that will lead us on to our own bright futures. Today, our common path diverges in 141 directions. 
I ask you not only to progress forward using the tools and skills we have learned together to climb to new heights, but also to remember the years we have spent on this mountain, the memories we have made, and the memories of this very day we stood together. I am grateful, as I know all of you are, that our trail started here together. So let us go now and blaze our own trail. Class of 2005, I'll see you on the top. Good morning, members of the school board, Mrs. Holt, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished graduates of the class of 2005. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Bow High School and our eighth commencement ceremony. It is truly a privilege for me to have this opportunity to share a few thoughts with you and with the class. I'd like to start today by thanking some of the people who, through their hard work and dedication, helped to make this commencement ceremony possible. First, to our school secretaries, Mrs. Peggy Burkhart, Mrs. Cecile Poisson, Mrs. Kathy LeClerc, and Mrs. Deb Hops, for all of the time they spent answering questions, making lists, giving advice, and supporting our seniors for the past four years. our buildings and ground staff who worked with us to make some changes this year to the gym to provide us with a more formal setting for our graduation ceremony. For Ms. For Ms. Gay Longnecker, who assisted the class in their graduation practices and who may be almost single-handedly responsible for a few of them graduating today. For our guidance team, Mrs. Colleen DeRusso and Mr. John Faris, our counselors, Mrs. Martha Ray, our registrar, and Mrs. Lisa Ransom, our dean of students, who have helped our students navigate through high school and prepare for the future. For Mr. Bill Mativier and our award-winning Bow High School band and chorus, for the wonderful music they have provided for us today, a special thank you goes to Mr. Mativier for helping us plan and set up our graduation ceremony. A ceremony like this does not happen by itself. It takes an enormous amount of work and coordination. I would ask you to help me thank Mrs. Martha Ray, our graduation and awards ceremony coordinator. For the past four years, our seniors have been guided by two amazing people, Ms. Jackie Harvey and Mr. Roger Tessier, our senior class advisors. Jackie and Roger have navigated with incredible success, the difficult boundary between advising and doing. They have encouraged and supported our seniors without assuming the responsibility for whatever task was at hand. Whether it was the class trips or the adopt-a-grandparent program, the prom or the homecoming festivities, Jackie and Roger were always there for the class. Please help me thank them for everything they've done for our seniors. <laughs> the 
Finally, we would not be here this morning if it were not for the dedication and tireless efforts of some very remarkable people. I'm referring to our teachers and our staff here at Bow High School, but also at the Bow Memorial School and Bow Elementary School. I would ask the members of the class of 2005 and the audience to join me in showing our appreciation for all of their hard work. Every year, I have the incredible opportunity to share a few thoughts with the graduating class. I view this opportunity as a great honor and a huge burden. It is an honor to have this terrific opportunity and a burden to try each year to think of something to say that is meaningful and that you might remember for a moment or two after I say it. This year is obviously special for me. It's special because of the long and close relationship I've had with the members of this class and their parents. So I thought it would be nice to share this special opportunity and the burden that goes along with it with some of the parents that I've gotten to know over the last nine years. So I asked some of the parents of the class of 2005 if you had the great opportunity to address the graduates, what would you say? You would have thought that they were back in high school and that this was their graduation test. They took their assignment from the principal very seriously. The words that one parent used to describe you included, oh, I can't say that word in here. One of the words was tolerance for those that have different interests and different ways of life. This parent went on to say that you have a diversity of interests that enables you to achieve a balance of academics, athletics, and the arts. You were described as being exceptionally talented with an uncommon depth of talent and exceptionally giving, especially to those less fortunate than yourselves. Another parent said, I would start out by congratulating them on being such great kids. She talked about your maturity and your integrity. She talked about how you did a pretty good job of keeping your noses clean. You have been described as a group of hard workers. You get the job done in an unassuming way. You've also been there for one another and you have experienced a lot during your four years of high school, but you've provided each other with caring, understanding, support, and encouragement. Still another parent said, I would remind them of the girls lacrosse and the football championship seasons. And I'd tell them that those seasons are a lot like life. As President Kennedy's father, Joseph, said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Both teams suffered some disappointments during the season, but they didn't give up. They came together, they worked hard, they played at a higher level to win their championships. Finally, a parent said to me, I would tell them that life is an incredible interaction of forces, and you need to live your life in balance. 
So that's what your parents wanted me to tell you. As for me, as both a parent and your principal, I would simply say, always do what you know is right. Work your hardest. Do your best. Know who your friends are. Love your family. Have faith. We love you, and we're very proud of you. And in the words from Marlon, taken from the fountain at your junior prom, Godspeed on the journey to you. Thank you very much. Do we have to tell you to put that away? <laughs> what a crowd. What a crowd. Superintendent Holt, Mr. Edwards, Ms. Longnecker, honored guests, family, friends, and of course, the wise and wonderful class of 2005. When, when Ben called me, when Ben Jordan called, to ask me if I'd be willing to speak at graduation, I was recovering at my parents' house in Massachusetts. It was St. Patrick's Day. I didn't know if maybe Ben had kissed the Blarney Stone, <laughs> or maybe it was just the luck of the Irish, but whatever reason, I am so grateful to Ben as president of the senior class and to all of you seniors, to each and every one of you seniors for welcoming me back today and for giving me this opportunity to speak and to be with you. When I was in the hospital in March, after my second surgery to remove the cancer that remained, I had a roommate. Her name was Jennifer. She and I were the same age. She was very soft-spoken. She was kind. She'd been married for seven months. And one month, after she and I were both released from the hospital on the same day, just as I was beginning to feel stronger and better and more energetic, Jennifer lost her battle with cancer. And I have to tell you that not one day goes by that I don't think about Jennifer. And not one day goes by that I don't stop and think about how blessed I am and how lucky I am and how fortunate I am. And being here with all of you today is just one more example of my good fortune. And it's one more thing that I have to be grateful for. So I really want to make sure you know, seniors especially, it is such an honor for me to be here. And I'm very humbled that you would ask me. Now, seniors, you have probably already received, and you will undoubtedly receive, lots of advice. This is a big milestone. And as you continue to become morally sound and intellectually mature individuals, I hope you'll consider a little bit of my advice, too. One of my favorite stories is one that you may have heard or heard a version of before. It's about perspective. The story, as I know it, is about a British naval commander. We'll call him Roger Wilson. He was sailing Her Majesty's yacht with the Queen and Prince Philip on board. Commander Wilson saw lights ahead bearing straight down on the yacht. So he signaled the oncoming lights, please yield. But the lights kept coming. No, you please yield, they signaled back. So the commander tried again, please yield. And again, the negative answer, no, you please yield. So as the story goes, the commander, faced with these lights, decided to pull rank. I am Commander Roger Wilson of Her Majesty's yacht. I have the queen herself and Prince Philip on board, and by royal decree, I order you to yield. And back flashed the answer. I am John Smith, and I've been in charge of this lighthouse for 15 years. <laughs> now, seniors, it's been a long year. It's been a long spring, and it's the last day of class, but some of you might have missed that, so I have a little visual for you. It's not to scale, okay? Here's the lighthouse. Here's a ship. 
Only one of them can move, right? You get it now? You get it? Okay. There will be, I'm sure, plenty of times when you will face obstacles, lighthouses in your life, and times when you'll be disappointed when challenges prevent you from getting you where you need to go. We all know that overcoming hardship, whether it's in the classroom, on the playing field, in a hospital room, isn't easy. Try hard to help other people achieve their goals. Be flexible, seniors. Be aware of yourself and of your surroundings and try to keep things in perspective as much as you know where you stand and where you stand for. Be reasonable. Appreciate that other people are just as passionate about what they are doing as you are about what you are doing. Be the response that you long to hear from other people. This spring, we've all heard quite a bit about the late Pope John Paul II. In all the recent publicity about his life, his pontificate, his travels, his political impact, and his suffering, one of his most noble and unique acts has been highlighted again and again. Back in 1981, there was an attempt made on the Pope's life while he was riding in a motorcade at St. Peter's Square in Rome. Many photographs circulated at the time showing the red drops of blood as they stained his white vestments. In 1983, after the Pope had recovered, he went to the prison that held his assailant, a Turk named Mehmet Aliaka. And what the Pope did while he was there seems both impossible and incredibly redemptive. He forgave this man for trying to kill him. Supposedly, the most difficult words in the English language are, I am sorry. Now, I don't know what they are in Turkish or Polish or Latin but I'm sure they're just as difficult. And though I don't expect, nor do I hope, that any of us will ever be called to forgive on the scale of Pope John Paul, I hope that we can all embrace the universality of forgiveness. Forgiveness is not a Catholic thing, or a Jewish thing, or a Muslim thing. Forgiveness is a human thing. And all too often, I think, we put ourselves in the place of forgiver, as in, oh, I could never forgive so-and-so for that. What, I have, what we have to do, I think, a little more often is put ourselves in the place of forgivee and think about the graced moment when we hear someone say to us, I'm sorry. Be gracious and sincere when accepting the apology of someone who has wronged you. Be eloquent in the simplicity of an embrace. Be forgiving, seniors. Be eager to look humbly for the chance to be redemptive. The third and last story I want to tell you is about faithfulness. Some of you may have heard of the actress and comedian Gilda Radner. Well, your, your parents will have heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask them about her later. She, uh, I read one time that she had a dog, some kind of a terrier. Over the years, the dog suffered from many illnesses and ultimately had to have her two hind legs removed. Radner delighted in describing the way that her dog moved around. Right paw, left paw, drag the back. Now, none of this stopped the dog from getting pregnant, however, and before long, she gave birth to three healthy little terrier puppies. And you guessed it, looking to their mother's example, they learned to get around too. They followed her in an obedient little line. Right paw, left paw, drag the back. The, the point is, all of us have role models. All of us have people we look up to, and none of them is perfect. Someone once told me, we are all broken, but it's through the cracks that the light shines through. Despite our imperfections, we all have something we can give. Be faithful to your gifts, faithful to your communities, faithful to whomever it is you are called to be. Seniors, just think about how many people look up to you, especially today, when you celebrate this great achievement of your graduation. You have a responsibility, though, a responsibility to be cautious, to be aware, to be careful, 
The underclassmen look up to you too, though they might not admit it. Your siblings look up to you. The kids you work with, babysit for, counsel at camp do too. What you do, the decisions you make, all have consequences for yourself and for those around you. Be faithful to the good. Be faithful to the goals you aspire to. Faithfulness has always manifested itself in service, in charity, and in kindness. Be faithful, seniors. Choose carefully. Be faithful to yourself. And finally, finally, be first. As in, be the first one. Now, I don't mean that you have to win everything, and I don't mean that second place is lousy. What I mean, seniors, is that you should strive always to be the first to keep things in perspective, the first to forgive, the first to be faithful. Our society, our world, desperately needs people of courage, people of values, people of integrity. Be first. It's hard to believe that we were all freshmen together back in the fall of 2001 when we began our journeys at White Rock Hill Road. Now you're moving on to new adventures, and I remain ever hopeful as I watch you go. Roger Bannister, the British runner who was the first human to break the four-minute mile in 359.4, said this, I felt at that moment that it was my chance to do one thing supremely well. It's my most sincere hope for you seniors, for all of you members of the class of 2005, that you find your moment. And when you find that moment, continue to make us proud. Thank you, seniors. Good luck. Goodbye. Godspeed.
she took her love for to gaze a while among the fields of barley. In his arms she fell as her head came down among the fields of gold. Will you stay with, stay with me? me? Will you be my, be my love? love among the fields? Good morning. Thank you all for coming to the 2005 graduation and commencement exercises. Uh, I've recently been introduced by some of my family members to the wonderful actor and celebrity who is Vin Diesel, um, and I hope you'll forgive me if I give a short plug for him. In the summer of 2006, Vin Diesel is going to star in a new production of The Odyssey. He was able to secure this role because 3,000 years ago, he actually was known worldwide as Odysseus and happened to videotape his journeys. <laughs> it's true. Really, it is. In sharp contrast, Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem, Ulysses, describes the king as an aged ruler, having survived long after his arduous quest in the Odyssey. He is tired of daily life in Ithaca and longs to set sail on a journey into the west to discover Elysium. He says, I am part of all that I have met, yet all experience is an arch wherethrough gleams that untraveled world whose margin fades forever and forever when I move. How dull it is to pause, to make an end, 
to rust unburnished, not to shine in use. This quote, one phrase from one stanza of one of Tennyson's poems, illustrates how everything in this world can be broken down into subunits. Subunits so diverse and abundant that to attempt to catalog all of them would be to completely relive history. Just as speech could be broken down, made up of sentences, which are made up of words, made up of letters, letters coming down through European history from Cyrillic origins, and words through various channels from an even older Indo-European ancestor, and so on. So it'd be ridiculous for someone to spell out all of such components. Instead, it's merely possible to know that, as Ulysses says, I am part of all that I have met. Sometimes it amazes me to stop and think that the words I'm reading in a book, or a scene of a movie I'm watching, every word written or spoken, every set piece, every camera angle, everything that's anything, has been carefully analyzed by writers, actors, directors, and hundreds of people whose lives, for however long or short a time period, have gone into that creation of that piece of artwork. Construction of this piece of artwork, that whatever it is, I will enjoy so briefly, that I will enjoy for only a moment of my lifetime. And so it's not possible to give full attention to all of these subcategories, subplots, all of the time and effort that goes into the making of anything. Examining an aspect of the whole so closely would, in fact, make it harder to comprehend the beauty of the work in its entirety. Retracing steps would lead, ultimately, to complete stagnation, to a time where people do nothing but continually watch a rerun of the rerun of that TV show that aired 14 million years ago. In the same way, we can't look back on all of the individual moments, friends, lessons, and teachers that have molded us into who we are today, all of the individual experiences that have composed our time together. But we don't forget them either. Somewhere in our brains, our, his our memory, that pesky little tool that remembers all of the words to a song you haven't heard in 10 years, but can't remember what time your dentist appointment is tomorrow, catalogs what we've gone through and files everything away, ready to bring it into the foreground if necessary in the future. Although Ulysses contains all of his past experiences within him, and at least in my imagination, his trials against Neptune would be more than enough for a couple lifetimes, he continues to say, yet all experience is an arch where through gleams that untraveled world. This untraveled world is our future. It is a world for which we have been prepared by our schooling. We have learned how to contribute to our community, to our relationships, and to our own lives. We have been prepared to enter our college lives and the workforce as better citizens. We have been granted the ability to see the paths ahead of us and to make reasonable decisions, to say whether we want to continue down that road or take a left at the Burger King coming up in a quarter mile. These teachings are part of us, just as every other memory we have are part of us, just as every part of his life is a part of Ulysses. If you're quicker than I was when I was first writing this speech, you'll notice that the fact that even while I deride attempts to break apart aspects of our daily lives, I am dissecting the stanza I quoted earlier. But let me continue. How dull it is to pause, to make an end, to rust unburnished, not to shine in use. It's easier to think about the past than it is to think about the future. So it's a lot easier to remember the first day of school, the most embarrassing moment you had in high school, a great concert or an athletic championship. Any individual moment of the past is much easier to dwell upon than any possible thought of the future. The past is concrete, but the future unpredictable. One's memory of the past may change over time, or retellings of events may change, but the events themselves never do. The future, on the other hand, is a complete variable. We may cast hope upon it, scheme for it, or even fear it, but in the end, we have no idea what will actually happen until it actually happens. <laughs> that had to be bad planning on someone's part. But that unpredictability is what Ulysses so loves about seafair. After looking at a map between the site of Ilium and Turkey and a direct course to Greece, it's difficult to imagine spinning in circles in that one corner of the Mediterranean for as many years as Ulysses did. Yet Ulysses decides to return for the sea for the same reason that we are here today. We are ready to face whatever it is that's coming because of the assistance of everyone around us. Look around. 
These are the people who have taught us yesterday, who are standing beside us today, and who will guide us tomorrow. Together, we have forged ourselves in the fires of yesterday's tomorrows. And now we will leave the furnace and spread out like the pieces of wildfire that we are. We may stay in contact with one another. We may not. But there will always be little subunits of everyone gathered here today in any one of our minds, in our memory, and little habits we've picked up from each other and in our subconscious. Subunits that have truly made us what we are today. All of these seniors you see before you, like Ulysses, are on their path into the uncharted Atlantic to find their own way through life. And I will leave you all with words Ulysses used when he and his companions turned away from Ithaca and set sail into the undying lands. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are, one equal temper of heroic hearts made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to seek, to strive, to find, and not to yield. Good morning, everyone. I feel honored to be able to speak at this year's commencement exercise. First and foremost, I would like to thank you all for being here today. We are here today to honor all graduates, and we are also here to thank our parents, relatives, faculty, and friends for their support and guidance throughout our journey. When preparing my speech, I looked to find inspiration from other writers. One happened to stand out above the rest. Theodore Seuss Geisel's work has been an inspiration to me and probably most of you here. I've always admired the simplicity and meanings of his work, and we have all come to know and to love him as Dr. Seuss. Congratulations, graduates. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. We are here this morning to celebrate the end of our high school days, but although this is an ending, we begin a new journey a journey that represents the beginning of our adult lives. The message that I have for you today is as you begin and endure this journey, be yourselves. Never compromise who you are, what you value, or what you believe in. As Dr. Seuss has told graduates before, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you'll be the one who decide where to go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you'll go, you'll top all the rest. Dr. Seuss has a way with words that can teach lessons to anyone of any age. Throughout my life, he has taught me with encouraging words and lovable books. It seems to me that Dr. Seuss knows that we have the ability within ourselves to stay true no matter what the situation. From these four years, we have gained the knowledge to make it on our own. As we leave Bow High School today, don't change or compromise who you are. Take what you learned from the past and use it. Good judgment and prior knowledge will lead you in the right direction. Life, as most everyone knows, is not easy or fair. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly, it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. <laughs> Life will not always go as planned, and it is up to you to determine how you'll handle these situations. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself is not easily done. Believing in yourself and your convictions will give you a confidence, a confidence that will bring you places. You'll know what choices to make to solve anything. This is the time to show the world, and perhaps, most importantly, yourselves, 
how ready you are. It is up to you to find the success inside yourselves. Your choices, judgment, and ability to persevere are found within you. Your confidence to be yourself would be admired by others because true confidence is not easy to come by. You are the one who will make the decisions of your life, so follow your heart and be true to yourself. Achieve anything that makes you happy. Don't be afraid to be yourself. If people don't accept you for who you are, then why should you be the one to compromise? Keep this in mind. Would it be worth it to lose yourself for a compromise? So, be your name Buxbaum or Bixby or Bray or Mordeki Ali von Allen O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Congratulations, class of 2005. I wish you the best of luck in years to come. Benjamin Michael Jordan. Kelsey Laura Moses. Melissa Nicole Richtarek. Pavan R. LaCour. Andrew Douglas McKernan. Lauren Elizabeth Zelinsky. Kurt Andrew Zelinsky. Tori Alexandra Zakarian. Paige Elizabeth Worthington. Nicholas Peter Watkins. Jacob Wasag. Matthew DeRay Warden. Sarah Elizabeth Ward. Anne Marie Weidlich. Janine Elmira Tinkham. Caitlin Alyssa Thompson. Amy Lynn Tewksbury. Keaton Parkhurst Sweat. Joshua Richard Stewart. Michael James Spillane. Eric Denton Smith.
Tyler Justin Shishak. Nicholas Martin Schaefer. Laurie Surrett. Tara Catherine Ryan. Daniel Nathan Rosenberg. Eugene D. Robinson. Barry T. Reynolds, Jr. Jared Worthing Reynolds. Christopher David Pacino Reynolds. Jessica Sarah Reby. Jenna Elizabeth Raffio. Nathan Scott Rabbit. Roxanne Lee Prisby. Colin Patrick Pratt. Joshua John Porter. Richard J. Pollard. Courtney Brianne Perkins. Eric Allen Pearl. Joshua Dalton Patton. Adam Edward Patch. Justin E. Palm. Ian Loring Osgood. Francis Henry Joseph Nidock. Matthew Ryan Nichols. Stephen A. Murphy. Sean Henry Murphy. Spiridon N. Morogianis. Kaylee Moretto. <laughs> Emily Margaret Moffitt. <laughs> Corey James Waskin Miller. Emily Alice Malazzo.
Brian Lee Murgis. Michael Thomas Maher. John Paul Zagroba McManus. Ryan Joseph McDonald. Stephanie Jeanette Manzione. Anne Justina Manter. Danielle Justine Malatesta. Ryan Michael Mayola. Heather Elizabeth McGuire. Karen Lindsay Mack. Tess Margaret Lassard. Jared William Leff. Scott Michael Lefave. Sarah Lynn Marie Levine. Lindsay Dawn Laval. William Gardner Lowers. Sarah Elise Lowerson. Christopher Chapman Knight. Megan Alice Kincaid. Molly Rebecca Kidder. Megan Nicole Ketman. David Jordan Kelly. Jennifer Marie Jordan. Matthew Miles Jensen. Matthew Edward Jacy. Benjamin Paul Jarmack. Jennifer Ruth Jaffe. Vanessa Staples Imsey. Concha Agari. Harlan Hutchinson. (laughs) 
Perry Baron Huntoon. Jeremy Albert Hunter. Andrew William Holdsworth. Blake Matthew Hooper. Hillary Ann Holmes. Peter Crosby Herrick. Taylor Lee Heights. Jacqueline W. Heatley. Matthew Nicholas Curtis Harding. Eric Richard Hansen. Ryan Patrick Hannon. Brian Donald Griffin. Isabel Gray Warner Gottlieb. Courtney L. Glasser. Donald Anthony Giaquinta. Philip William Geary. Kevin Michael Garvey. Sarah Helen Ganley. Marissa Lynn Frank. Amy Sue Fonsby. Jessica Lynn Foley. Caitlin J. Flanagan. Michelle Anna Fig. Elizabeth Jane Fellows. Rita Maeve Egan. Jeffrey William Edwards. Kara Elizabeth Dugas. Mallory McNally Dufresne.
Craig Michael Dufour. Raquel Doltz Gaetong. Jonathan G. Dixon. Lauren Ashley Deal. Alex Whitney Curran. Logan William Cox. Jessica Leah Cody. Katie Lynn Clothier. Michael John Clancy. Anthony Joseph Cesarini. Corey Stearns Kane. Courtney Ann Berghard. Kevin Michael Buckley. Chester Stanley Buck IV. Brittany Virginia Borgo. Catherine Elizabeth Boucher. Jill Lynn Bover. Peter Ray Best. Bradley Russell Best. Kristen Ann Bemis. Jamie Lee Bemis. Sebastian Becker. Meredith Ann Batley. Stephen Eric Bascom, Jr. <laughs> Laura Margaret Bardsley. <laughs> Sarah Elizabeth Osman. Christina Marie Aurelio. Adam James Audley. Jessica Marie Allison. Stephania Asabron.
What an awesome class. On behalf of the faculty and administration of Bow High School, I certify that the members of the class of 2005 have met all of the requirements for graduation of Bow High School, the school district, and the state of New Hampshire. Congratulations. Congratulations.